Hi guys, today I want to talk about dynamic neural brain retraining, DNRS. I'm using this method from Annie Hopper to try to retrain my brain for multiple chemical sensitivity. And uh, at first it sounded kind of like BS to me. I thought there's no way that I can just outthink this. But the more and more I watch her videos and I look stuff up, research, things like that, I'm starting to piece together what actually happened. So I want to explain how I developed chemical sensitivity. I was being, I was being treated for mold illness and it's, I had a spec scan done on my brain and I had the lack of prefrontal cortex blood flow. So there was definitely damage there. So if you think of your brain like this, and the stems down here, maybe that makes more sense. Uh, my prefrontal cortex, there was a lack of blood flow. That's concentration, stuff like that. Third eye for all you hippies out there. Um, anyway, so, uh, ironically, when I started taking CSM, my brain got a lot better, my memory cleared up, everything got better for me, except I developed a chemical sensitivity. Now, what I think happened is I developed all this blood flow to my brain, and it basically didn't know how to handle all the, inf the new information, the new pathways, and... I was also living with like a crazy person who was pretty mean to me. So I think that I, my brain, when it started healing, it associated danger with abnormal things. And if you look at the brain, the prefrontal cortex is here, right? This looks weird, but um, then the olfactory bulb is here. And then your hypothalamus is here. So it's a pathway from the prefrontal cortex the smell sensory of your brain to the hypothalamus. I know the hypothalamus uh, is damaged in my brain or was at some point because I'm missing ADH, antidiuretic hormone, vasopressin, which um, when they put me on it, I feel great, but then it, it doesn't hold permanently because I still, I still had all this damage done. So when I started taking CSM, my brain lit up like this. I mean... Boom. It was like I had all of these pathways. I was dreaming and I was like, wow, this is amazing. But then I developed chemical sensitivity. And so I'm thinking what happened is my brain rewire or, or is wiring. It wants to wire. Right. But it's it's wiring um, with fear like this. It, it doesn't know how to process all this information. And there's some patients in the Annie Hopper program, who uh, also had like sensitivity to light. And I think that's all the same area in the brain. So I don't think this program would work as well if you're currently experiencing brain damage, if it's still happening, if you're still being inflamed constantly. But what I think happened in my specific case is that my brain turned on, but all the pathways were over firing it, it didn't know what to do with all this information. So, so, um, hold on. So, Annie Hopper, she has a, a cool program that's geared specifically towards multiple chemical sensitivity and chronic fatigue and. Uh, just other sensitivities and I'm trying to think pain. Pain was one of them. But I think for hers, I would say it's probably best for chemical sensitivity because that's what she developed. So it's kind of geared towards that, which is cool because there's other programs for pain. So it's kind of cool that she geared one towards chemical sensitivities, like props to her. But let me tell you, this video is like old and there's a lot of crying. It's just like a lot going on and like a lot of it, it um, is not satisfying my super scientific brain. But some of it is like it's de definitely it's cool stuff to learn. 
and a lot of this pathway stuff that I'm talking about in terms of where everything sits in the brain and my own theory on why I specifically developed a chemical sensitivity. I mean, none of that's in there. So that's just kind of stuff that I've been piecing together by nerding out in my pajamas. Um, so anyway, so there is another person. Uh, she has a TED Talk. Marissa Peer is her name. And she had some sort of accident. I forget. But her arm wasn't straightening out. And she wanted to straighten her arm out. And the doctor said, she can't do it, blah, blah, blah. And then one doctor was like, we can do this, but it's going to be painful. And so what she did was she developed a program for pain about rewiring your brain. And I just want to go through some of the points that she made because uh, I, you know, I want to respect Annie Hopper's privatized information, whereas Marissa Peer has her, this video is free, so you could find it yourself if you want. Um, so what she says in her video is what she did is you have to tell your mind you want it, and then you have to link massive pleasure to going there and pain to not going there so you can motivate your mind and use very detailed words. You change the picture, change the words. And make the familiar unfamiliar and the unfamiliar familiar. She says, it's not positive thinking. It's rewiring your brain for success. So she's, she, when you're in pain, your response is to pull. And she said that she had to actually push. So what she was doing is she was telling her mind that I want this. And she was linking it to something positive in her brain, which is the same type of exercise that Annie Hopper has in her DVD set. Um, so that's kind of, you know, it, it's so what I've been doing with chemical sensitivity is I, when I smell something, I stop my body and I say, okay, this is not actually a threat. Like, I know you think this is a threat and it is disgusting, probably, because chemicals are disgusting. But um, I just tell them, I go, I go to a different part of my brain. There's also a TED Talk where there was a woman who had a stroke. And she was saying that when she, she had a stroke in her left side of her brain, I'm very left-sided, so <laughs> this is a harder exercise for me. But she says she had a stroke in her the left side of her brain, so... Um, when she was all right brain, she, she felt like she had no boundaries, like she couldn't feel the size of her body, and she felt very, very light and airy. And so that's the exercise that I choose to do when I smell or I'm near a chemical. And I, I try not to smell it. I don't, I don't think about it. I, I go to the right side of my brain. And so what I'm doing is I'm just shifting the blood flow to a different part. I'm trying to just change the brain pattern when I am exposed to something. I haven't really done this with chronic fatigue yet. Um, I pr probably that's a harder because I, if you think about the brain again, prefrontal cortex, olfactory bulb, and then hypothalamus. Like my chronic fatigue comes from blood pressure dysregulation, which is in the hypothalamus. So I'm I'm starting like from the outside in, you know. I want to ease into this. So you start with sensitivities and stuff like that. And so I go to my happy place and I'm just like, ah, I'm light and I don't care. So Annie Hopper, what she says is, uh, I wrote it down somewhere. Oh, so, okay. So Annie Hopper uh, says to think something, she has these like affirmations that you say and uh, the, I, so I disagree with her on this for me, for me specifically, I didn't vibe well with this. And she says, you know, think things like I am happy. I think things like I am light because that, that helps me. But for me to say I am healthy, uh, it sounds like a lie. And I read that when you say affirmations that you don't believe it actually has a negative impact, which is the problem with positive thinking. Like, it has to be something that's actually true or you know will be true or or just something believe that you believe personally. So it's a very personal thing. 
Um, right. So I don't say I am healthy in my mind. And I like Marissa Peer's version of this better. But again, Annie Hopper is very geared towards chemical sensitivities. And she's the one that opened my mind about this because everybody else links it to pain and stuff like that. But I needed it for chemical sensitivities. So definitely cool stuff there. But Marissa Peer has this mantra that she says in her mind and she says I have chosen to do this and I for me personally that was a way better affirmation for me because my if I'm like I am healthy my brain will be like no bitch you ain't healthy you know so um I like I have chosen to do this. I am choosing to not react to this chemical because I know that it's not actually a threat. And I know that I know that I'm trying to rewire this pathway in my brain. And now when I'm I do it because I just looked this up today, so like literally five minutes ago. So now when I'm going to do it, what I'm going to do is envision this brain and say like, okay, I know why this is happening now. Um, I'm very grateful that I have a lot of my brain, like that's incredible, but also I know that this type of overreaction to specific chemicals at this point in my health career, I made that up, is not beneficial to where I want to go. So I'm choosing to rewire this pathway in my brain because I know that I don't need it. It's not helpful. Like I don't, it should be fine to walk past a camel candle <laughs> camel <laughs> okay anyway um that's pretty much all I have for you now I think I don't want to give away all all her stuff but oh yeah okay I wrote some stuff down so um for me I, I had this kind of resistance to using a delusion because I don't like to tell my, I don't like to lie to myself. Like, I like to live in reality. So when I was thinking of it as a delusion, that kind of threw me off. But you, but it's not positive thinking. Again, it's not positive. You're not like, life is, ah. yeah, it's just not. It's not. It's, um, and what you do in Annie Hopper's program is you think back to a time that actually existed, an actual memory which is really, if you think about it, a really cool exercise because you're going to a different part of your brain, the, me the amygdala, basically. And you're going back to an emotional memory that you had. And so you're just rewiring. Like, that's all it is. You're, you're literally rewiring as you're experiencing something. And, um, yeah, rewiring, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. It's, okay, it's, it's basically, like, if you think about it, when kids are getting shots and the nurse will try to ask them about school and what they like and things like that because it distracts them from the pain of the shot. And you know that pain won't last forever. So it's not necessary to process it as pain. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know it's good for you. You know it's temporary. You know it's it's either good for you or it's not. Um, it's not permanently damp. It will not do permanent damage. I mean, we're not getting into any type of shot theory right now. Any type of vaccines or anything. But I just mean like in general, there's a distraction when you know that you have to do something mildly painful for uh, results that either will be neutral or will be beneficial. And that's what we're talking about. Like when you're walking by someone wearing deodorant, you shouldn't fall to the ground. That's an that's an overreaction. So you're be, you're distracting your brain to teach it uh, not to react, at least temporarily. But but according to the program, it will hardwire at some point, and you will no longer need to keep doing that because your brain will know that these are only temporary things so we can just move past this we don't have to like fall apart okay that's all I have for you guys today um I'm still doing phages ba -bum -bum. I'm still nebulizing I'm still having a lot of biofilm coming out which is why I sound kind of congested but I'm not really it's just it's just the biofilm doodads but I'll do uh, an update on that once I have 
the results of the Marcon's test. Okay, bye.